What's up dudes? It's good to be back today and the topic we're going to tackle is the role 5AR inhibitors like finasteride have on mental health issues like depression if indeed they have any role at all. So we have already talked about the effects of 5AR blockers like finasteride and dutasteride on neurohormones in previous videos but I would like to expand upon that subject here. So starting off it's already been established many times through clinical research that blocking the 5AR type 2 enzyme via drugs like finasteride is the best way to safely stop hair loss long term since the 5AR type 2 enzyme is the enzyme responsible for converting testosterone into dehydrotestosterone aka DHT which we all know is the main culprit behind hair loss in men genetically predisposed to androgenic alopecia. However, the 5AR enzymes blocked by 5AR inhibitors like finasteride and dutasteride have other roles in the body, particularly the nervous system, other than just stopping the conversion of testosterone into DHT. The 5AR enzyme also happens to block the conversion of progesterone into dehydroprogesterone, which is then converted into allopregnanolone in the brain, and this is widely believed to be the causation of finasteride's alleged mental health side effects like depression. Now, low allopregnanolone levels have been correlated with depressive behavior in mice and have also been shown to be lower than normal in blood and cerebral spinal fluid in patients who have depression. Now the way allopregnanolone works with the brain is that it interacts with what's known as the GABA receptors in the brain. It turns out that there are receptors in brain neurons that respond to gamma aminobutyric acid known as GABA as already mentioned and allopregnanolone enhances the receptors and a lack of allopregnanolone will tend to shut them down, leading to depression, at least theoretically, as it's only been shown in mice. Now, I've never seen a depressed mouse, but apparently this is something that can be assessed scientifically. So, the bottom line is that 5AR blockers might theoretically cause depression. <clears throat> But as with everything involving mechanistic data, the answer isn't always that simple, nor does it always correlate with outcomes in the real world. Elaborating on that, the initial studies on finasteride before its marketing reported no episodes of depression, even in the prostate cancer prevention study, which included 17,000 patients and used a dose of 5 milligrams per day of finasteride, as opposed to the standard 1 milligram per day, which is standard for hair loss, I should say. So the initial package insert for finasteride did not even include depression as a listed side effect at all. Eventually, though, anecdotes and small studies appeared reporting depression as a side effect. For example, in 2014, a study appeared that reported 19 patients who had depression on finasteride that resolved with stopping it, which is important to emphasize. The side effects went away. They weren't permanent, despite the fear monger you may have heard about the drug. Nevertheless, due to these reports, the drug company added depression as a possible effect, uh, a possible adverse effect on the drug's package insert, likely as much to avoid litigation as opposed to any science as judges and jurors are more likely to assign blame based on emotion rather than science. So just because a drug has a listed side effect, this doesn't mean it's a scientifically validated fact that the side effects exist. But the drug company nevertheless may acknowledge it since sometimes lawsuits don't care about facts. Now, Aside from the anecdotes and small case studies, which in general are not great evidence since there is no control group and there's no way to assess the incidence of side effects from the case reports, there is little in the way of prospective studies on depression and finasteride. Now, prospective studies are better than case reports because the study is planned out in advance and it is possible to assess how frequently outcomes occur. One of the few prospective studies is from 2006. This was a study... <clears throat> This was a study of 128 men with androgenic alopecia on finasteride at a dose of 1 milligram every day that was intended to assess the role finasteride has on mental health and depression. Before they took the drug, the patients did two standard written questionnaires on mood and a third questionnaire on anxiety before beginning treatment and then did them again after two months of treatment. Now remember the part about it being just two months because that is going to bring me to an important point later in the video. So assessing the results after two months, it was indeed found that depression scores increase significantly. Anxiety scores also increase, although it wasn't significant. Now, keep in mind, in scientific literature, something being significant doesn't mean it was major. It just means it was large enough, so it probably wasn't due to just chance. Now, we're not going to get into details of these psychological tests. The only thing that is important is knowing that the higher the score, the worse off you are. So, in the two tests on depression, the scores went from 12.11 to 12.80 and 4.04 to 4.61 before and after 
finasteride, the anxiety test scores went from 6.24 to 6.60. Even though the scores went up, these are not big changes. More importantly, none of the participants in the study actually reported depression as a side effect. Also, there was no control group, which is important because frequently with control groups, side effects also occur due to the nocebo effect, and it's possible a control group would have had the same changes in their test scores as the people on finasteride. So, it's worth pointing out that the first couple of months of finasteride are typically the most stressful times for those who are new in the fight against hair loss. Results from finasteride typically come later. They usually don't happen at two months. Sometimes it can take as long as six months, and additionally, people who begin treatment can even experience a shed due to an accelerated antigen growth phase that the drug triggers. Also, people may be worried about side effects during this period, and top that with the fact that few will see any progress beyond baseline, and it's clear that this moment of uncertainty can trigger negative emotions in people. This could easily be the cause of the mood changes in the study. I know many people, and you can see them in the comment section, they'll be told shedding may occur when beginning any treatment, you know, their doctor will tell them this too, uh, yet what happens is they'll still get extremely anxious and they'll interpret natural hair turnover within the first few months of treatment as a a sign that the drug is not working even though the drug's efficacy is extremely good and the chances that it doesn't work are very low as proven in the clinical trials. Now, although the original few case studies of depression on finasteride indicated the depression reverted itself upon stopping the drug, in the last uh, several years or decade or so, there has been a vo very, very vocal group of individuals who have complained of persistent sexual and mental health problems after stopping finasteride. This is the so-called post-finasteride syndrome that everybody likes to talk about. Now, several studies and review articles have examined this syndrome, and they have concluded that there is no clear link between finasteride use and depression after stopping the drug. So why is it that there are still some people who continue to insist that the drug has irreversibly damaged their mental health? Well, like the initial studies on finasteride depression, the studies on post-finasteride syndrome PFS are small, they lack control groups, and are tainted by heavy selection bias. So what I mean by that is most of these patients for these studies actually come from these anti-finasteride forums like Propecia Help. So is there any science supporting permanent hormonal changes with finasteride at all? Well, a study from 2016 showed that people with post-finasteride sexual dis dysfunction and depression had no difference in androgen levels and other hormonal levels compared with control groups. There was no hormonal basis for their problems that was found. This implies heavily that perhaps the condition known as PFS, post-finasteride syndrome, is more psychological as was noted in the TRUIP study, which I've talked about before, where it was found that the so-called sufferers of post-finasteride syndrome already had a negative view of the drug, so they were obviously just giving themselves a nocebo effect. So, it seems obvious because hair is such a component, it's such an important com uh, component of aesthetics and identity that people who start losing their hair are much more likely to have depression and anxiety. In fact, studies have shown that having hair loss predisposes men to depression, stress, anxiety, hypochondriasis, which means being a hypochondriac, and even suicide. Body image is very important in this day of age, and people with hair loss start out with a risk of psychiatric illnesses. A study from 2000 2018 entitled Emotional Consequences of Finasteride, Fool's Gold, looked at persons complaining of PFS recruited from anti-finasteride websites like I mentioned. These people were administered psychiatric questionnaires and it was found that 55% of them already had a history of pre-existing psychiatric illness before they even started finasteride and 29% had at least a family history of psychiatric illness in the first degree, which means a parent or a sibling. So if you've ever actually visited any of these forums and read some of these posts, you wouldn't have to be a psychiatrist to realize that there is something seriously off with them mentally. You know, for example, I even read a post where someone said that using a saw palmetto shampoo just once made his dick and anus permanently numb, and everyone on the forum believed him, and that is some pretty crazy stuff, people. But, you know, I'm happy to note that there is scientific data to validate my opinion of these people, and I sincerely hope that they get the psychiatric help that they desperately need. So, 
To conclude, the alleged link between finasteride and depression is very weak and extremely overhyped. People are fearing it, but their fears are not grounded in any scientific reality, but rather they are grounded from fear-mongering promoted by online forums, haunted by people with access to grind, and are looking for scapegoats for conditions which finasteride obviously had nothing to do with. So, does this mean that finasteride never causes depression? No, I didn't say that. It might, but even though there is a lot of talk about allopregnanolone, there are no human studies that confirm this mechanism. If depression occurs, it is rare, and it's striking that the initial clinical trials involving thousands of men didn't even pick up pick up upon it. Remember that depression is a common side effect for many medications. For example, blood pressure medications like ACE inhibitors can cause it. Uh, calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, all can cause depression. Uh, depression is also very multifactorial. It can be a combination of internal and external factors, so it's very hard to determine if a particular case of depression is due to one factor like finasteride. So we can conclude that depression from finasteride is rare at worst, but depression from hair loss is very, very common. So if you are really worried about depression, your chance of avoiding depression is probably much better if you go on finasteride and regrow your hair, as opposed to letting your hair just fall out. I mean, if hair loss weren't so depressing, then there wouldn't be bald acceptance channels where people go to be surrounded by people who tell them what they want to hear as a better means of coping with their newfound misery. I mean, it's funny because you hear them say things like, oh yeah, shaving my head is the best decision I ever made, I wish I did it years or decades ago, but if you listen really closely to their voice, you can tell they're about to break out into tears. Lastly, and seriously, if you do suffer from depression or you have any suicidal ideas, given that it's a tough time we're all going through right now, uh, you should seek help right away and don't even think about finasteride until you have these thoughts under control. Hair is important, but saving your own life should always take priority. So for those worried about finasteride causing depression, stop worrying. You have much more to fear from losing your hair than anything finasteride may on the off chance do to you. And the longer you wait, the worse it's going to get. Time is of the essence. So, all right, guys, that's uh, all I have to say about that. Uh, I will be back with more content soon. Thank you for watching.